Hey y'all, hey, welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Bambi, so come on in. What a crazy intro, right? Y'all, I look hot mess. But I'm finally getting this DIY video out today for the table that I've been wanting to create for some time now. You've probably heard me reference it multiple times in previous videos. I want to start this off by showing you all the tools that I'll be using to complete this project. So if you remember in the previous video, I found this trivet in Ross and I was trying to decide if I wanted to keep it marble, maybe like do the gold ribbons here in a black color and just leave it white or paint the whole thing black. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it all black guys, just to keep it monochrome. I've already removed the felt pads. There were four kind of like in each corner. I removed those pads already, as you can see. And then I'm not too focused on the sticker that's here in the middle. You won't be able to see it once I get the table assembled. Um, I may do a little bit of Gooby Gone or 91% alcohol just to take that adhesive off of there, um, which is really a personal preference because you're not gonna be able to see it once I get it all together. But we have our trivet there. And then for the base, I'll be using this glass vase. I love the curvaceous shape of this. So this will be a very unique table. This is a glass vase that I purchased from Ikea. Oh my goodness, guys, maybe four years ago or so. I don't know, I've had it for quite some time. I don't know if they even make these anymore but um, I've tried to give it away over the years. Nobody's been interested, and so it's just kind of been hanging around. So I decided to, hey, let's do this DIY side table with it. The thought just came to me, so why not act on it, right? So let's get creative. And it's pretty tall. I'd say it's about 36 inches tall, maybe. Okay, tall enough to be a side table. <laughs> And then I have my go-to, as you all know, that have been following me thus far. I love to use the two-time Rust-Oleum spray paint because it is a two-in-one. It is a primer as well as paint, and this is the ultra matte color. I have about half left in both of these cans, so I'll be using the both of these. Hopefully, this gets it, and I won't have to go back to the store to use any more. And then, of course, my handy dandy can't live without <laughs> tool for my spray paint. So basically how this works for those who are new is, I'll show you. So let's take the top off of this paint. You simply insert the spray can onto this nozzle like so. And it looks like that. I love this tool. You can see all its scars and war wounds from all the usage. But um, I love to use this. It's also Rust-Oleum brand because it helps me to evenly distribute my paint. It prevents me from overspraying and things like that. And it also is a protective barrier for my hands so that I don't get paint on my nails or my hands. So yes. I love this little thing. Very inexpensive. I've had it for so long because I've been doing creative projects for a while. But I want to say, if I can recall, it was no more than like four or five bucks. And I think that was Walmart. Next, I have my Gorilla Glue. I purchased this out of Hobby Lobby, but you can pretty much get it anywhere. I like this one because it's micro precise. It's like a gel and I didn't want anything thick or bulky and I didn't want to have to try to distribute the glue around what I'm going to do. And so I chose this one because the tip is very, very thin. So we have that. We'll be using this to adhere the trivet to the glass vase. And then I have a plastic drop cloth. I use these for painting. I may use this and I may not. If I do use it, I'm going to cut it so that it is just enough for me to complete this project and then I'll have some extra for future projects. 
So I have my tape measure out here. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not or just kind of eyeball it because I wanna get the top of the vase, which I'll show you here. I wanna get the mouth of the vase evenly on that trivet. So then, uh, you know, again, I might eyeball it. I might not. I also have two cloths here. So I have a damp paper towel and then I have a terry washcloth. I thought I had some more microfiber cloths, but I don't know where they are. Maybe I use them all up in my vehicle or something like that, but I had a ton of them. But um, I'll be using this to clean off the vase so that we have a good foundation before we start adhering that paint. So let's get started, y'all. I forgot to mention, because you probably have seen this sitting here like, girl, okay, what is that? So basically this is what I'm using for foundation to put the trivet on top of when I adhere it to the vase to kind of give it an even surface instead of like on the floor, which can sometimes be on level or like on the carpet. So we want a smooth level, even base. So that's what this is for. Now that we have everything assembled, as you can see, I added my white Tom Ford book to the bottom of the glass to add some weight to kind of compress the glass against the marble trivet, basically adding that much needed weight while the super glue cures. So while it's doing that, going back to one of my hacks. So, you know, I mentioned some glue be gone to get off that kind of like sticky adhesiveness on the marble trivet. I also mentioned that you could use 91% alcohol this is superb sometimes i go to this instead of the glue be gone when i say this works so well and it doesn't take much but it is definitely a great hack for removing adhesive off of things so that is easily coming up and you don't have to put in a lot of elbow work Smooth as day. This is awesome. Over it just a little bit more just to make sure that's the OCD in me. <laughs>
Okay, I forgot to mention, or forgot to show you as well in the beginning of the video when I was showing you all my tools that I will also be using the Rust-Oleum. It's a protective top, protective top coat in matte clear. It says chalk, so it has like a chalky smooth finish, but to me that's similar to the matte. So I'm gonna give it a try. Hey guys, okay, so checking back in. I had some of these foam pads laying around the house somewhere, but I could not locate them. So I ended up having to go to Ace Hardware to make a purchase. And so these foam pads, I will be applying to the bottom of that side table to kind of give it a little bit of grip, also to be a protective barrier from the bottom of the vase and the floor. So I just want to show you guys this. Okay, so the table is completed. It looks so unique and perfect for DIY. <laughs> so I've placed it here in my bedroom next to the side chair. And I have a black throw and a pillow here. I know that's a lot of black on black, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys, as well as myself, a visual of how that looks ignore my loud shoes but that's great like it's the perfect height for sitting here and reading like with a candle or a catch-all tray or a drink even my kindle so i just added a few things there to kind of give it a moment so i have a candle there and the studio mcgee dish tray that was a gift a while back just to show you how functional it can be in this space. Okay, another view with my Kindle there. Just trying to see how it will fit. But I think this is the perfect height. I can also have it in here in my office between my two office chairs as an accent piece, conversation piece. Again, small enough for like drinks or something minimal on top. I just took that bowl from the old and set it there. This project came out exactly how I envisioned it would, which is Chef Kiss in the DIY world. <laughs> Although I painted over the gold strips, it still gives some character underneath the black and it's a vibe. I just wanted to share how you can take simple objects around your home and create a moment with some creativity. If you've made it this far, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below and drop a comment because I love chatting with you guys. If you like all things home decor and lifestyle, hit that subscribe button before you leave. And for my OGs, don't forget to turn on those notification bells so that you don't miss any future content. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.